Yo, 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 big kish back up in here. We about to go over Kendrick Lamar had tried to warn us about Drake's gang. Man, I keep telling y'all, man, Drake is dangerous, bro. He in the gang, 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 gang. He in the gang, 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 gang. But y'all know I don't like holding y'all. Without further ado, let's get, get, get it. Drake and Kendrick Lamar beef, both men's affiliations and crews were called into question. In Drizzy's case, he had to face accusations that his crew was full of... That's Baca right there, bro. Dangerous. ...abusers. Meanwhile, Drake seemed to suggest that Kendrick's ties to the Bloods were nothing more than rumors and speculation. Even going as far to say that YG was one of the only rappers to really bang a set before he later realized that the relationship was strictly business. Declared a civilian and colonizer, the perception that Drake was a way softer guy than his rival K-Dot made sense. After all, one grew up in Compton while the other spent their early years in the suburbs of Toronto. But if you dig a little deeper, it turns out that Drake, who's been telling the world that he'll make someone around him catch a body like that since 2011, might actually be deeper intertwined with Toronto's underworld. And when you dig even deeper, it looks like Mr. No New Friends has a whole new entourage these days, and that's a far cry from the crew that he used to roll with. Nobody that I've ever considered a true friend has switched up. But these like fly-by-night people that you just come across, they're all not to be trusted. But to pay Oh, so he really don't trust nobody that he just met in the hip-hop industry. See, these is day ones right here. You know what I'm saying? These is day ones right here. These are the ones that's going to go to back for him. In a picture, we need to take a look at Drake's look, look, look. Dude, tough, man. It's original crew. Back when Drake emerged on the scene, his friends, which consisted of O.B. O'Brien, 40, O.V. O'Brien. Bro, look at him. Eyebrows like that. He'll, he'll do something to you. Definitely do something to you. The O.V. O who? Scene, his friends, which consisted of O.B. O'Brien. Look at him get shaved. That dude would do something to you, man. For real. Ryan, 40, OVO Ryan, Oliver, Future the Prince, and Chubbs were easily identifiable. And it wasn't for how imposing they were. But over time, most yeah. of them have moved past their status as extras in Drake's music videos. To start, the co-founder of Drake's record label, OVO Nico, was a first-generation Canadian whose parents moved from the Philippines. And now he co-owns the Scarborough Shooting Stars basketball team. Meanwhile, his longtime producer, OVO40, also oversees the label while Future the Prince, his touring DJ, and executive producer of Euphoria serves as his manager. From the outset, these men seem like genuine friends, and much like Drizzy himself, each of them were outliers in the hyper-masculine world of hip-hop as they were far more soft-spoken and honestly, kind of bordered on nerdy. Me and Drake got together as friends. We were in a small city, Toronto. Well, it's not a small city, but uh, it becomes a very small city, and it was a small scene at that time. We got together because we were both young, and being progressive and, and doing a lot of great things for our city. Over time, these men took on various leadership roles in the OVO framework, while others found them. Y'all see that sign right there? You better not ever throw that sign up. That's a dangerous sign right there. Dangerous. Dangerous sign right there themselves on the outside looking in. For example, O.B. O'Brien was once seen as a promising rapper in his own right with tracks like Steve Nash and Two On featuring Drizzy himself, but allegedly he got caught up with the feds on drug charges, as well as allegations that he, along with another former member of Drake's circle, might have been talking to underage girls. That man was O.V. O'Brien, Drake's real-life cousin who was completely cut loose from the crew, accused of interfering with Johnny Manziel's career by always, quote-unquote, bringing the- So that's Sandra nephew right there. That's how they cousin. That's Sandra nephew. That's OVO. Uh, I forgot his name. Yeah, Party. He was allegedly called out for bringing underage girls to the Yellow Estate, as well as being a degenerate drug addict. Over time, the proximity to success went to Ryan's head, and Drake cut ties completely, with Drake seemingly referencing him on the track Losses. Then we have the head of Drake's security, Chubbs, shouted out in the Thank Me Later liner notes where he said, thanks for risking your life every day to ensure my safety. Chubbs was a one-man army at the outset of Drake's career, but even with Chubbs ready to risk his life for Drake, this wasn't enough to deter rappers from treating Drake like the soft kid from the six and essentially bullying him. Because of this, Drake was on the receiving end of violations that have since become the stuff of hip-hop legend, like the time a friend of T.I.'s urinated on his leg in a movie theater. The wildest I've ever seen before in my life. All right, have you ever wondered how producers or DJs are able to Don't let a man piss on your leg, son. Ever let a man piss on your leg, Adonis? Play this when you're 18. 
Delicious intent. I don't see how I could ever be taken as a diss. I don't see how it could be. That would be somewhat uh, allowing that. He being, he being funny. <laughs> Come on, bro. You be on somebody's leg, man. I would, bro. Better not nobody talk about that. The emotions to manipulate them, if so. Elsewhere, he was slapped by Diddy, which resulted in J. Cole, of all people, leaping to his defense. And to make matters worse, he wasn't safe in his own city either. In 2009, he was robbed for $2,000 in cash, an Audemars Piguet watch, and a diamond chain Little Wayne had gifted him. I knew it was a setup because I had on a sweater and a jacket, but when they banged on the car window with a gun and opened the door, the first thing he said was, yo, run that chain. They didn't rob her, and her purse was sitting right there. So I was like, okay, yep, you set the whole thing up. But for Drake, this was a turning point. And in the track from Florida with Love, he discussed how people had their pistols loaded, pointed at my truck. And you know that lesson stuck. From that day, I never touched the road without a plug. From this exact moment, this marked the beginning of Drake's transformation and a crew to go with it. And soon. Oh, so that allowed him to be gangster. That's what that was the turning point. He was moving differently. With Chubbs in tow, Drake began adding a whole string of hard-edged characters to his entourage, including the infamous Baca Not Nice. Uh -oh. Before the world knew him as the guy with the weird case, Baca was known as Drake's self-proclaimed goon. The and on songs like No Long Talk, <laughs> Drake leaned into his tough yeah. image, showcasing these new, oh, edgy man. additions to his entourage. And in interviews, Baca confirmed that if things were to get crazy, he's the man who sent in to defuse the situation. You gotta understand something. If you're gonna disrespect my boss, my brother, my friend, or anybody on my team, I'm gonna feel offended. It would be weird if I if I didn't. Those are my brothers. Those, mm -hmm. those are the men that I eat with. If he needs me, he, he will call. He call. And soon his services would be enlisted as Drake began to act like a different man than the sensitive, thoughtful antidote to gangster rap that he once seemed to be. For starters, in 2014, you had petty situations like stripper Johnny Blaze and Atlanta IG model Shia G being harassed for exposing their encounters with Drake. In Johnny's case, she said it began with heated text messages from Drake before it progressed to members of his entourage banging on her door and threatening her life. As for Shia, her crime was simply showing off Drake's affectionate side as he'd allegedly bought her designer bags. On top of incidents like starting fights with Chris Brown, Drake's newfound confidence led to incidents like producer Detail, who was offered the executive gig on Drake's album, being assaulted for refusing to exclusively produce for Drake. Supposedly, he arrived at Drake's home at 2 a.m. under the pretext that they were going to hop into the studio. And at this point, he was allegedly jumped by Chubbs, who left him with a broken jaw. I will beat all your ass, including your Chubbs apparently said amidst the beatdown. I don't give a I will hit you again. Do you think Drake is soft? You think Drake's a punk? Detail says he was so badly hurt he couldn't work for a year, TMZ reported. He asked Drake repeatedly and in vain hey. to cover his medical expenses. And when Drake refused, Detail sued. Unfortunately, he wasn't even the last former music wow. collaborator to be on the receiving end of violence. Because in 2016, Toronto rapper Mo G spoke out about OVO's business practices, claiming that he hadn't been fairly compensated for the work he'd done. Have you ever ever heard in the history of hip hop a man Plays creativity and helps make billboard hits, but doesn't get paid a dollar for it, one credit for it. You're stuck in the hood. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. Oliver's a snake, a double headed snake. Previously shouted out on Summer 16 as Mo G with the dance moves, it became apparent that clout wasn't enough oh, for Mo, and he wanted to be is. compensated. And after a series of posts, OVO eventually paid him to make the problem go away, and all social media references to Drake were deleted. However, Mo wasn't done there, and when he didn't feel like he got enough money, he took things a step further and sought to unveil unreleased music of Drake's that he had a hand in. Just to let the world know, I never got paid no 12 grand. For the record, I'm not signed to OVO. Check the history. I always delete all my posts and I deleted it because I got bigger info coming to you right now. As we Just days afterwards, Mo posted to his Instagram to reveal that he'd been on the receiving end of an assault and that he had been hospitalized. Got him. Got him. Nose look like a whole hot dog. Got him. Capitalized, claiming that this is what happens when you speak from the heart. Hashtag dirty industry. Since then, Mo G's momentum has fizzled out, and he's since claimed that he's essentially been blackballed from his own city. Dear fans, am I being blackballed? For the past two years now, I'm banned from 99.9% .9 of studios in Toronto. I'm banned from all clubs. I'm banned from doing shows. I'm banned from doing appearances. And when I get lucky and find a studio, engineers salt up my whole thing. They turn up the headphones, up on full blast on some haters. 
and they wonder why I stopped rapping for two years. There's no opportunity. It's simple. Suddenly administering beatdowns on the download, Drake's crew have continued to move like this ever since. In 2017, rumors about an altercation between Dram and Drake started doing the rounds. Then, later in 2023, per loss, Drake seemed to gloat about what had happened, spitting, tried to bring the drama to me. He ain't know how we cha-cha slide. Refusing to let this go unchecked, Dram revealed his side of the story. And just like every incident we've talked about so far, it was Drake's goons that put in the work for him. Somebody tell Drake to shut the up about that man. Five years ago, never even touched me. I pressed his ass. I ain't gonna hold you. His bodyguards went to town on the kid. But his bodyguards did not his He ain't touched me. He's a You know that. Emboldened by his street ties. So so Drake putting uh dropping dimes on people here. Drake soon started linking up with individuals from the Reps Up label, including G-Way and Galloway Boys Gang members like Gilla and P-Rain, as well as the late Anthony Fifth Sores, whose death Drake publicly mourned on Instagram. Furthermore, he was known to have ties with people such as the Triple G Gang and Halal Gang. With that, he only grew even more cocky, resulting in Kanye West tweeting in December of 2018 that Drake called trying to threaten me. The kid he had run on stage and pushed his concert is in critical condition. So Drake, if anything happens to me or anyone from my family, you are the first suspect. So cut the tough talk. But Drake would do anything but stop and continue to play this new, well-connected life where he was desensitized to violence. Plus, courtesy of his ties to Jay Prince and Houston's Mob Ties crew through his early discovery by Jazz Prince, it was Kanye that would be soon backing down and asking to perform at a benefit show with Drizzy as Jay Prince stood menacingly in the background. I'm making this video to address the ongoing back and forth between myself and Drake. Both me and Drake have taken shots at each other and it's time to put it to rest. I believe this event will not only bring awareness to our cause, but prove to people everywhere how much more we can accomplish when we lay out. Bro, why Jay Prince shaking his head like that? <laughs> not only bring awareness to our cause, but prove to people everywhere how much more we can accomplish. That's right, that's right. Don't make me, don't make me do something to you. Now well versed in the ways of the streets, it's for this reason that he could watch Bennett Snipes get well on by Eunice Benjima without batting an eyelid. Sued by the victim for traumatic brain injury as well as injuries to his back, neck, and shoulders. Following the attack, Snipes also alleged Drake gave him a throat slash hand gesture as he exited the VIP section before he was allegedly tacked while attempting to leave the restroom. From uh -huh. Halal Gang to the Triple Nobody do this no more. <laughs> You know he corny. He watched too many movies. <laughs> Yo, no one man should have all that power. Not him. He don't need no power. He said he be doing this to people. You're done. I'm gonna get you. Well, G Crew, Drake's reach in Toronto apparently knows no bounds now. As a result, when DJ Drama, who was seen as an instigator in the Meek Mill Drake beef back in the day, visited Toronto, drama. he was robbed for his chain, and after they carried out the deed, they shouted out none other than Drizzy while flexing the stolen loot. Uh. That's what you get for not checking in. Shout out boy Drizzy, eh? You know how he rocks. But it isn't just Toronto's inner city gangs that Drake has ties to. Bizarrely, he's also apparently affiliated with the Toronto branch of the Hells Angels, the famed motorcycle club known for their violent ways and heavy involvement in organized crime. And this was exemplified when Rick Ross recently slid through Toronto, playing Kendrick Lamar's Not Like Us. Immediately, he was confronted by Hells Angels members and jumped. Later, his DJ Sam Sneak was also assaulted. Then it was revealed that the man who carried out the assault was none other than Andreas Terazakis, otherwise known as Icarus. His father, Anthony Big Tony Terazakis, who was affiliated and spent time in prison for trafficking drugs in the downtown. Town eye, east side yeah. of Vancouver, as well as numerous. That nigga, his eye and his head. Oh, he a Hell's Angel? Oh, never mind, never mind. Haha, <laughs> I'm just joking, y'all. I'm joking, I'm joking. Worst brutal assaults. Previously seen in a Hell's Angel sweater from Toronto's Route 18, in a photograph alongside Travis Scott, Drake's flagrant use of their imagery led to Staff Sergeant Lindsay Houghton of the Toronto Police condemning his actions. Seen alongside his neighbor and Hell's Angel affiliate Andrew Kerno in the video Family Matters, it seems like Drake is really doing his most to not only maintain a profitable career, but also create a network of people who are ready to slide for him whenever required and in any state. So when the weekend's manager Cash XO's house is shot up just days after the recent gunfire, Drake. And Drake looked just like Sandra, man. <laughs> and Drake looked just like Sandra, man. <laughs> Shut up, Sandra. This mansion, which led to a bodyguard to? being hospitalized. Shut up, Dennis. Shut up, Dennis. While I'm talking to you. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm bugging, man. I need to go to sleep, bro. Y'all have no clue what time it is right now, bro. Yo, go <laughs> I get goofy when I need to go to sleep, bro. Shut the hell up, Sandra. I'm talking to you. <laughs> It almost yeah. feels like he's hiding in plain sight. Oh, Similarly, when Kendrick's pop out concert attendees Roddy Rich and Schoolboy Q have faced sudden show cancellations <laughs> and outright bans from Canada's borders, it really starts to put things into perspective. <laughs> With Chubbs now being referred to as Capo today, which essentially means a captain in the mafia, it seems like there's a hierarchy at work. With Drake perched up right at the top. With ties to the. Hey, y'all let me know, man. I'm telling y'all. Drake ain't nothing to be reckoned with. Ain't nothing to be messing with. Y'all, hey, y'all better be careful out there, man. For real. Y'all let me know what y'all think of the video, man. Y'all think he a real stepper like that? Or y'all just think that's the people around him putting in that work and he just paying them off? Big Kish signing out. I'm gone, man.